Hello. There's a crucial part of short story writing which occurs before you put any words on the page. It's the process of finding ideas and prompts. It's a bit like gathering wood for a campfire. It takes time and effort and searching around to find good kindling that lights easily and produces a strong burn. As writers, we also devote time and effort to find narrative kindling for our short stories. These are prompts and ideas that spark questions, or suggest intriguing situations, or cause a particular voice or mood to surface. You know when you find them, because you can't help but start to make connections and sense possibilities. Here's a couple of examples of what I mean. During a country walk, I saw some bright red balloons tied to the gate of a remote field. They immediately prompted questions. Why this isolated location? Who put them there? Who was meant to see them? Were they a celebration or a memorial? On another outing, I saw a tailor's dummy in a phone box next to a country pub. It was no doubt meant to be fun, but it gave me an ominous, dark feeling. They're both perfect illustrations of how things that are incongruous or mysterious or just downright weird can act as fuel for stories. To help you discover your own narrative kindling, I'm going to suggest a simple three-stage exercise. Step one, gathering your kindling. In the real world, searching for good firewood requires you to walk around and explore, and we can re replicate this by taking a stroll, specifically for the purposes of collecting story prompts. When you're out and about, remember it's not just about the visual. All the senses are important. So it can be really useful to take pictures or even record audio. The sorts of things that you might want to include are intriguing signs, particularly on notice boards or on lampposts, and particularly homemade signs. Lost or discarded items. I once found a whole dinner set laid out on a pavement. Perfect narrative kindling. Smells and tastes. I found it really evocative when two different smells overlap. Overheard conversations. Just one sentence or a phrase can make a great story idea. Window items. It's amazing what people display in their windows if you look closely. And old shops' windows are a treasure trove of ideas. Mismatches and incongruities. Things that don't belong together are great for short stories. For example, the scrap metal truck that rattles around my neighbourhood has a huge teddy bear lashed to the front. Now, to be honest, that's quite disturbing, but it's also intriguing. If going for a walk is difficult, then try the same thing around your home, but imagine yourself as a complete stranger, seeing everything for the first time. The principle remains the same. Look for things that spark questions, associations and connections. Step two, build your fire. After your walk, create a list of about 10 prompts, words, images, audio files, whatever you've got. Study your list. What mood or tone is suggested? Is it menacing, funny, melancholic, angry? Keep mulling over those prompts. Is there a character or a voice that emerges? Is there a setting that comes to mind? Is there an ending suggested? If you don't feel inspired immediately, don't worry. Juggle the order of the prompts, say them out loud, try to make lines of dialogue out of them. In other words, play around with them. Sometimes the process happens quickly. Sometimes it takes a while. Step three, light your fire. In our campfire analogy, there's a point where you've gathered your wood, made your fire, and you're ready to ignite it. The same applies with narrative kindling. You've gathered the prompts, put them together, and now you need to start writing. My advice at this stage is concentrate on the process. Don't worry about the end result. Ignore your inner sensor and write fast. Try to write enough in one sitting that you can return and warm it up again just like adding new firewood to hot embers. I really hope this helps you find some great narrative kindling.
and some amazing stories. Thanks for watching.